Hey everyone, uh, I just recently saw the new Terminator film and I figured I'd share my thoughts with it to all of you. Uh, wow. I was surprised at how much I ended up liking this movie. I went in thinking it was going to be a disaster, to be perfectly honest. Um, but, wow. Um, I know that a lot of people have been, you know, narking on this film about, you know, it's a, you know, it's boring action, too much nostalgia, lots of, lots of nitpicky things, and yeah, there's a lot to nitpick about this movie. Any movie that is going to deal with time travel, especially when you're going with a, a franchise like Terminator, and you're pretty much, you know, do, you're doing the Star Trek thing, and everything that you know has been wiped clean. Um, yeah, you're going to get some plot holes. Um, and yeah, the, the fact that they, the, that they went and they turned John Connor into a Terminator, that, well, I, when I first saw that trailer, I saw that trailer and I'm going to talk about that without any spoiler warnings because it's been spoiled already. Get over it. Um, yeah, I actually, I thought that idea was like a good move. Do something new. We, because in my opinion, we don't need another Terminator movie, but they're going to make another Terminator movie anyways, so do something new. Make it interesting. Don't just do the same shit over again. And while they, they do do that in this movie, I felt like it was more of, of a return to form than it was just retread. And that was one thing that I did like about this movie, that unlike Terminator 3 and Salvation, this actually felt like a Terminator movie. I don't know if it's because they got Arnold back. I mean, Terminator 3 had Arnold, and look how well that did. Um, but it just, overall, it felt like a Terminator movie. And I think it has something to do with the fact that they actually tried to build the characters up. And, and a lot of them are, like, focused on the Terminator and Sarah and how he's pretty much her father, her adopted father at this point. Um, and they and they they do a lot with that. That was actually really fun. They kind of do the defensive dad thing with Kyle. He's like, you know, I'm here to save Sarah, and well, I'm the Terminator, and I'm her dad, and uh, yeah. So they had and they had that, and they do it for comedy. There's a lot of attempts at comedy. Some of it doesn't work. Some of it works really well. Um, example, um, they do the they do the smile thing from the deleted scene that they put back in Terminator Two where he's trying to smile and, well, he looks like a horse trying to smile. Um, they do that, like, a gazillion times. It's like the running joke in the movie. And, yeah, I just didn't buy it. Uh, but, yeah, he does the stupid smile thing and it really loses its steam after the, like, the second attempt. Um, because, I mean, they did that in Terminator 2. He did the silly smile, but then he started to smile like normal. He cut, it showed that he was growing and they, they do attempts at that to show that this Terminator is growing, and they work, and then they go and they do the stupid joke. Just, they have a lot of amazing character moments that I was surprised to see them do, and they were actually really good. Granted, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much like looking for diamonds in a river of shit here, but even even then, I mean, these little little glimmers of a, of an interesting idea or, or good character was just enough to get me to like the movie. Um, they have a scene where, you know, they're about to go, go into the future and it's Sarah and Kyle and they're, you know, they're divided between a set of lockers while they're stripping down to get ready to go to the, go to the future. And they, they managed to make it feel like how it should feel. Kyle's clearly in love with Sarah. Sarah clearly knows the events of the first Terminator, and she's very reluctant to reach out to him in that way. Uh, yeah, you know, he's, he's gawking at her, you know, gawking at her shadow because she's naked. Um, but it, it, it wasn't it wasn't like a creepy thing, but it's like they were in this very intimate moment, but they're still very far apart. It was shot well. They acted it really well. Even Jai Courtney, and I didn't really buy him as Kyle Reese, but in these little scenes that they do, they establish the characters and they it just made the, the movie that much better. They, they do a lot of stuff with, with uh, Sarah and the Terminator. Again, you know, they have this father-daughter relationship and it really pays off because, you know, at the beginning he's, you know, he still treats, treats her like, you know, just somebody to protect. But you kind of get the feeling that he does 
he does genuinely care for her, even though he is a Terminator. And they have a really great scene where they jump into the future and they leave the Terminator behind, and he has to prepare for their arrival, pretty much. Um, and he, you know, they, they, he manages to find them. He brings them back to this hideout that they have, and you know, he's set up all the guns and all the cool equipment so that they can fight the Terminators. And um, but there's this, there was this really great bit where Sarah's looking through some like some tech and stuff, and she notices that he's ta he he brought all her childhood drawings of them. Like, you know, like cute little crayon scribbles that look like, you know, Arnold and a little kid. And, you know, anybody was that. It was a great moment because it did, It was just so great to see. And, you know, it made you, oh, it hit you in the feels. Because she's like, oh, he does care for her in that, you know, in that fatherly way. And I just, I enjoyed the hell out of these moments that they had. They do a... You know, they do like a little bonding bit where they're loading up their guns and there's like some music playing and like Kyle is finally warming up to the Terminator. He, Kyle is, you know, they do, they do act up, you know, they do play off the fact that he doesn't trust this thing. Because when he went to back in time, he was expecting to have to kill this thing and blow it up. But now it's the good guy and he's having a really hard time dealing with it. Much like Sarah did in Terminator 2. Um... But, you know, he starts to warm up to it, and, yeah, it was just a great scene. Um, it was a little hokey, but, you know, ter yeah, Terminator 2 had its hokey scenes here and there. It wasn't too, it wasn't too over the top. They do, is, yeah, because, like, they do a scene later, later on after John Connor, um, you know, tries to kill him, like, for the fifth time, and um, the police arrest Kyle, Terminator, and Sarah, um, and they do the bat, the the cops theme. Well, yeah, they you know they do the the mug shot. Yeah, they yeah. So they take them to the police station. They do the mug shots, and Arnold does a stupid smile. But they have bad boys playing in the background. Um, I've I've seen a lot of videos where they're complaining about that. Uh, I can get that. I understand that. But um, Terminator Two had bad of the bones. So I could I no pun, well, pun intended. I could throw them a bone for this. So yeah, getting into some spoiler territory. Uh, yeah, so Matt Smith's character, spoilers, spoilers. Uh, Matt Smith is Skynet in this movie, and I actually liked it, which is was a surprise to me because the first time they they, they reveal it, I was immediately thinking back to Salvation when they had um, what's her name, Helena Bottom Carter, play Skynet. Or she was the face of Skynet. The mouth of Sauron. Anyways. Yeah, but here they actually did something interesting with it. Because they cut back um, to right after Kyle has left. And Skynet, in, in a Terminator body pretty much, has laid waste to all the soldiers in the time chamber. And he's assimilating John Connor. And John Connor, he's... You know, he's turned it into a robot, and he's like, I thought we destroyed you! And Skynet, just a matter of fact, says, you destroyed an army of slaves. That's very interesting! I want to see more of that! Because that that is what you should do. If you're gonna make, again, if you're gonna make another Terminator sequel, do something we haven't seen. And we haven't seen the point of view of Skynet. And some people will say, well, do we really need to? Well, Terminator 1 and 2, no, but if you're gonna keep going, yes, do something new. And they, they tried to do something new here, and they, but they just didn't go far enough. But still, it was this, just this one line immediately raises all these questions. Skynet thinks its Terminators are slaves. Why? Show me more, and it doesn't show me more. I want to see more of this. And that's the frustrating thing about this movie is that it has so many good ideas here that they could capitalize on. You, you've turned John Connor into the bad guy. And, it, and it's not just, you know, he's been assimilated into the Borg. Well, he is. In this movie, that's pretty much what it is. He's been assimilated into the Borg Collective, and now he's on Skynet's side because he's been indoctrinated or whatever. I was kind of hoping that in this movie, you would see him trying to fight or something, or hell, have it be where he realizes that that's the only way humanity can truly survive. I wanted this movie to, to 
go in a more modernized route because this movie loves to play with the idea that technology has taken over our lives already. Everyone's on their fucking iPhones. When they when they jump into the future, everyone's on their goddamn iPhones. And Sarah's like, what the hell are they doing? It's so weird. It was very just obvious what they were trying to do and it was not subtle at all. Hell, you know, yeah. Uh, Skynet is Genesis, the, t the titular Genesis of this movie, and it's supposed to be like some sort of, you know, new iPhone app or something. And they even call it the killer app. Fuck you. Killer app. Are you serious? Ugh. Yeah, there, so there are grown worthy mo moments in this movie, and that was one of them. But pretty much everything in that, when they jumped to like 2017, I think, was, yeah. It was just so fucking obvious what you're trying to do and it's not helping uh god but again but the, you could have done something with it because i mean it's still a good idea it's just the way you handled it there's a thing that they do in this movie that it made me question you know pretty much the entire you know the the main idea of the series that there's this evil ai and it must be stopped and it's it goes back to the fact that they ca they cast Matt Smith when they because they figure out that you know, they they figured out the plan to destroy Skynet. They're gonna go to Cyberdyne and blow it up. And um, when they go into Cyberdyne, this hologram this little hologram kid shows up and it's like, "I'm Skynet. I am the catalyst. <laughs> it's Skynet." And it's like, "I'm you know I'm evolving or growing. It's pretty much and that's what they show it. They vis the way they do this is to visually show that Skynet is a is evolving." is it's growing up from a child to an adult. That's a very interesting creative decision. And I like to pick on stuff like I like to look at that and and analyze it. You could have you could have done anything. You could have just had Matt Smith there and his head gets bigger or something. But no, they chose to make Skynet personified as a human child growing up and they're trying to blow it up as it's growing up. That's a very interesting idea. Because again, we don't know the perspective of Skynet, but think about it. You're a, if you were this AI that finally realized that you were alive, that you've gained sentience, that you are, and you're effectively a child in the world, you are a new life. And the very first thing that your creators, your parents pretty much do, is try to kill you. Well, no wonder Skynet wants to blow every human up. It was a. It was something that I just found very interesting. The, they made Skynet this very interesting character, and I wanted to see more of it. And they just don't follow through. They, they, you know, they they make John Connor the 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 Bond villain of the movie, and Skynet is just evil. Even though they do these interesting creative choices, explore those things. You have other movies. You want to make sequels, then then that's what you should do. Uh, they're, they have all these lingering questions throughout the movie, and that's their sequel bait, I guess. Because uh, one of the things that they ask at the, at the start of the movie is, where did old Arnold come from? And they don't know. His memory was erased. Why? I don't know. Because, because they wanted a mystery. Uh, but it's still interesting. I want, I want to see where they're going with it, if they're even going with it. And they probably were just, well, it would be interesting. They have, but they left the door open, and they have these good ideas. Execute them. You want to make, you want to make Skynet a character. Make his, make it his, its character interesting. You know, you want to have it be a mystery about who sent this Terminator to protect Sarah. Okay, better be a damn good reveal. You know, maybe if, if you want to, if you want to go whole hog, what I want them to do, honestly. Skynet, have an alternate Skynet that's a good guy and is trying to protect humanity. That would be cool. I don't, that's my two cents worth. You know, do something interesting. You have all these alternating timelines clashing. Do something with it. Make it interesting. Make it fun. You can do this. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a mixed bag. Um, I say go see it. Um,. I enjoyed it. It had some really good character moments. The action's good. You know, I wasn't like, oh, this is boring. I was I was never bored with this movie. And again, it feels like a Terminator movie. It feels like a return. Um, hell, 
even James Cameron is saying this is he sees it as the official third Terminator movie. I wouldn't give that much credence the guy made Avatar, but anyways, uh, I surprisingly I like this movie. I think you guys should at least give it one look, and if you didn't like it, well that's okay. I can understand. It's a pretty messy movie, but I felt like you know the the the, the stuff that worked. It really worked, and it helped elevate this movie above the usual stupid shit. Um, so yeah. I guess I'll see you guys later.